guys and welcome back to the channel my name is so wow and this is your nxt takeover portland review for february 16th 2020 and overall this was an a plus show for me i really really enjoyed it and you know i'll say my thoughts towards the end but let's get started um the show opened up with a performance by poppy um I know nothing of this woman and her band, so I don't really have much to say, but she sounded great, so, and I felt like the song really fit in with the theme of the show, so there's that, but we opened up the night with Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic, and I'm going to really have a hard time saying that, because I just feel like his name is ridiculously difficult to say for no reason so i'm just gonna call him dd for the rest of this uh review on his match with keith lee but um overall i thought this was seriously they wait till i start recording to want to go make a lot of noise it's 12 30 a.m anyway um this match was really really good um i did write down some are you serious Again, I'm not editing any of this out because I guys want I want you guys to get the realness of how hard it is to record in the Bronx. Um anyway, this match was really, really good. Um I did write down some notes on the match, but I am kind of really, really tired, so I'm just gonna like speed through this as much as I can. What I did take away from this match was that these guys and they're big guys so let's let's just you know let's just call it what it is these guys are big guys the elephant in the room you know they're not they're not shaped like Finn Balor and Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole or whatever so these are big guys but I never once stopped during the match and said something like oh my god you know Keith Lee he's really fast for a big man like the match itself was really good to the point where their weight did not factor like their weight wasn't a factor in how they moved in a ring I mean yeah the moves that they were doing were they're a little bit more special and a little bit more entertaining because of their size but I don't feel like their size impacted this match in a negative way and that's what i really like about how nxt is presenting big men now because keith lee let's face it number one he's black number two he's big so vince mcmahon probably will love to put him in a ring but he'd be a joke a la like sexual chocolate mark henry you know or a dancing dinosaur you know so it's like i like that these guys are being taken seriously despite or in spite of should i say in spite of their their size and dijakovic i mean like i sound so special ed but um Dijakovic, I really feel like if you did not, if you were not aware of his in-ring work or you just weren't a fan of him in general, I feel like this match really made a lot of people a believer. I mean, he had a really, really good showing tonight. I mean, he did lose and I don't know where he goes after this loss, but um, he is... He is slowly but surely uh, growing on me. And I really feel like Lee made him look really good tonight. Because, I mean, Lee Keith Lee is a star, no matter what. He's just naturally charismatic. He moves well for, for a man his size, like I said. And I just feel like this feud between these two is not done. And I would really not even mind. Um seeing another match between them two. But um, like I said, I don't really feel like going through my notes for this match. Um, the second match, we had Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox in a street fight. Um, Dakota attacked Tegan during her entrance. They brawl through the audience. Kai DDT Tegan outside of the ring. 
and she sends her back into the ring for a two count. Dakota Kai starts, you know, she goes under the ring and she starts throwing garbage cans, chairs, and shit in the ring. She slams Knox into the steel steps. We fast forward. Knox has a table and she sets it up outside the ring and she tries to suplex Dakota Kai from inside the ring to outside the ring. But Kai blocks her and on the other side of the ring, she smacks the shit out of seeing Knox with a trash can lid. I freaking, I cackled. But, um, Knox is on the apron and Dakota Kai goes for a big boot, but she gets tied up in the ropes. Knox hits a super kick. She hits Dakota Kai with a trash can. Knox hits a just brutal looking German suplex on Dakota Kai on top of a trash can lit for a two count. Knox missed the senton. Kai hit a chiropractor and it, it looked really good the way that she did it for a two count. Tegan hits a Molly go round for a two count. You know, I popped. You know, I like Molly Holly. I popped. And Tegan Knox sets up a chair. And at this point, she starts like hesitating. Like, looks like she's got like tears in her eyes. But she misses a pump kick to Kai. And Dakota Kai grabs the chair. She throws it at Tegan Knox, who catches it and hits a big boot. Um, later on, Dakota Kai duct tapes Knox to the bottom of the ring post and she repeatedly just pump kicks Knox in the face. Like, again, I cackled because, like, I love Dakota Kai. Knox grabs a steel uh, chain from under the ring and she starts attacking Dakota Kai's knee. She puts her knee inside of a chair and stomps it. She hits a shining wizard. And at this point, she puts the table back in the ring. Um, Tegan Knox puts Kai on top of the table and she wraps her neck in a chair and goes to the top rope, and at this point, this is where the match just took a swan dive for me, because some chick named Raquel Gonzalez interferes, and she pushes Kai off the table, um, and then she goes to the top rope, and she choke slams Knox through the table, and when I tell you, Tegan Knox took a nasty-ass fucking landing when she, when this, um, Gonzalez chick knocked her off like I cringe and it wasn't and it's and it wasn't the first time I cringe but Jesus Christ did I cringe because I was like if the girl is not dead she's dead you know what I mean like she landed like somehow on her neck and head and I was just like Raquel Gonzalez needs to be arrested because she just fucking killed Tegan Knox on live television but anyway Dakota Kai crawls over and she pins Tegan Knox for a three count and wins the match. This was, like I said, the story was there. So whatever type of match they had would have delivered. But I feel like because it was a, um, because it was a street fight, you know, it added more intensity to how much these girls like in storyline hate each other. Um, I was really, really liking the match until, the, like I said, this Raquel Gonzalez chick interrupted I just felt like the air being sucked out of the arena because everybody was sitting there like who the fuck is this and why is she interrupting like I feel like if they really had to have interference in this match I wish it was somebody that the crowd knew that I knew and somebody that will play a part in the story because I because you know that this feud between Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai is not over so it being Raquel Gonzalez, I'm just like, okay, I don't give a fuck. But other than that, it was a really, really good match. And we followed that with Finn Balor and Johnny Gargano. And the first thing I wrote in my notes was, this was a long fucking match. Um, It started off really slow for me. I, I was getting a little bit like, I don't want to say bored because these two are amazing. But like, it just, it got stale really quickly. Um... I wrote some notes here, but I would just, I just kind of like skip through a lot of it. Johnny worked over Finn's arm early in the match. He hits, he spears Finn Balor off the apron. Balor hits a dragon screw leg whip that looked really, really nasty. And he hit it on Gargano as he was tied up in the ropes. Balor tried for the 1916, but Johnny sent him into the steel steps. Johnny hits a slingshot spear for a two count. He locks in the Gargano escape, but Balor gets to the rope to break the submission. Gargano drop kicks Balor into the uh, ringside barricade. And then both men 
are on top of the announce table and Balor eventually drop kicks Gargano who lands really really hard on the barricade um back in the ring Balor eventually hits the 1916 he drops Gargano right on his fucking head for the three count and Finn Balor wins um there was a lot of false finishes in this match I was not a fan of that and like I said it did start off slow but it really picked up towards the end and I did not expect Finn to get a clean win but and that rhymes Oh, God, I must be tired. Just excuse me. But um, this was a good win for him. Uh, I like that Mauro Ronaldo said that Finn took the flag, the NXT flag from Gargano. Um, Gargano. Oh, my God, I'm tired. From Gargano and planted it in his backyard. And I really feel like that's kind of what they're trying to do with Finn Balor in this heel turn. Um. We had a backstage segment with Kathy Kelly, who I'm sad that she's leaving because she's like one of the more likable uh, interviewer, whatever she is, uh, you know, besides Renee Young, who I just feel like has just lost so much steam. She should actually be the one leaving, but that's my personal opinion. Um, So Kathy Kelly interviewed uh, Roger Strong about his match with Velveteen Dream this Wednesday and the only thing I wrote in my notes and the only thing I took away from this was that Roger Strong is not the best talker so we really need to limit his interviews and his promos because he just sounds so awkward um I said this on Twitter I'm not the biggest fan of Strong and I mean he's good in the ring but just to me he has no personality so I'm pretty sure He will have a good match with Dream on Wednesday, but to me, it's only going to be because Dream is going to carry them to a good match. So, speaking of good matches, next we have Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair for the NXT Women's Championship. And before I get into this really, really good match, I just need to take a minute. And we all actually need to take a minute and appreciate how Bianca was just dripping in black girl magic tonight. I love the robe that said uh, black history in the making because it is black history month and just we all know how African-Americans are treated in the WWE. We are an afterthought and we are a joke. So, and I'm loving that she was representing Kobe and Gigi Bryant with the purple and gold colors. I mean, just... What else is there to say about Bianca Belair? She is just, she's just fucking gold. And Rhea Ripley is a beast. I mean, I don't know. There's really nothing to say. Rhea Ripley is just a fucking beast. But um, I did kind of just kind of glance through my notes here because, again, it is after 12 a.m. and I am tired. So, uh. Rhea lands some short arm clotheslines in the beginning of the match. She drop kicks Bel Air. She chopped the hell out of Bel Air. Uh, Rhea Ripley did a lot of trash talking, and it, it's and the reason I wrote it is because you know Rhea Ripley, to my knowledge, when she was on NXT UK, she didn't really do a lot of talking. So now that she's kind of transitioned to regular NXT TV, like she's doing a lot of talking. And I mean, I love her accent. Her accent doesn't bother me, but it just, you know, that's one of the little tidbits that stood out to me is that she's doing a lot of talking. Um, anyway, sorry. Belair hits a standing moonsault. Ripley hits a big back body drop on Belair. She slams her down from the electric chair position. She puts Belair in the in a standing figure four submission. I think that's what it was. And Belair pushes her shoulder first into the ring post. Belair hits a spine buster for a two count. Uh, while Ripley is on the top rope, both girls just bitch start repeatedly bitch slapping each other. Belair eventually hits her with her braid. She military presses Rhea. And goes for a springboard, springboard moonsault. Excuse me, but Ripley gets her knees up. Ripley blocks a KOD, and after a back and forth, Belair uh, lands a spear. Ripley blocks another hair whip um, move, and she charges towards Belair, who sends Ripley over the top fucking rope. Like Ripley, like Rhea landed on both her feet, but she looked like what the fuck just happened like she just looked like she was just not prepared for that like i'm pretty you know i know they go over the matches but i feel like 
like Bianca just like popped this out. You know, she just called, you know, she just called the audible or something and Ripley was just not prepared. Um, back in the ring on the top row, Ripley headbutts Bel Air. She goes for a sunset powerbomb, but Bel Air holds on to the ropes. Uh, Ripley gets her in the, uh, what is it called? Um, I don't know. It's that move that Tess used to do. Rest in peace. But anyway, Rhea Ripley hits a middle rope rip tie for three count and she wins. Um, after the match, Charlotte Flair attacked Rhea Ripley and she took the mic and she said she'll see Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. And she gave her a really just bad looking, uh, I don't even know what it's called. I don't. You know why I don't know what it's called? Because I don't care. Um, this was a really good match. Uh, I really, part of me was really hoping for like the shock victory for Bel Air because you, you're you not a real fan if you don't think and feel and believe that Bianca Bel Air deserves a title run by now. I mean, the girl is just fucking money. But, you know, I am smart. And I am a realist, and I do know that the WrestleMania money match is between Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. So, you know, uh, let's see what happens this week. You know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe the WWE will swerve us all and it becomes a triple threat. I would love that. But again, we all know that Bianca Belair is not winning that match. But um, this was a really, really good match, like I said. Um... Personally, Charlotte Flair just she makes my skin crawl. She does. Like I used to I used to stand for Charlotte, but that was back when she had the mole. Now that she had the mole removed, I just feel like she's lost every bit of likeness that I've ever had for her. So there was that. I mean, it must be nice to be white, big breasted, and have the last name Flair. So, you know, whatever. Um my only gripe about this match is that I would have had Charlotte interfere and cause a DQ. Okay, seriously? Seriously. I mean, I fucking hate living in New York, but it's like moments like this where I'm just... If I wasn't like up recording this, I would probably be trying to sleep with my nine-month-old, but with the amount of noise that goes on, like, it's a wonder how we don't get any sleep anyway. But, um... Yeah, I would have had Charlotte interfere in the match and cause a DQ or something. And that way it sets up for a triple threat. But, you know, I wasn't really a fan of the clean victory over Bianca Belair. And for all the people that saying that Bianca is not ready for the main event spot, like, let's be realistic. Let's, like, really deep dive. We all know that Charlotte is most likely not going to win the championship because, A, she's not going to, quote, unquote, demote herself and go back to NXT if she did win the championship. And number two, this is Rhea's moment. Like, I feel like this 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 early part of 2020, this Rhea has really, like, really, really earned, you know, a, the spot that she's in. I mean, she just screams badass. Like, she has the look. You know, I did point out that she is talking a lot, which is weird. I would not, I would cut down on the talking maybe. And she just, and she just, I use the word charisma a lot, but you need that in the WWE. And Rhea Ripley has that in spades. So, I mean, I don't know where that leaves Bianca after this loss, but I just also want to point out that her and Naomi are just bringing black girl magic to WWE TV. And that's exactly the type of representation us ladies need. So the next match was the Broser Waits. I'm I'm not a fan of that at all. So I'm just going to say Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle versus Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly for the NXT Tag Team Championships. This was a little bit of a long match. I did write some notes, but man... Just scrolling, looking at what I wrote. Don't feel like going through all of it. What I will say is that Matt's promo before the match was very cringe. Like that, how many fish or fish should can a Bobby fit, whatever it was. Like sometimes a joke is just better received when the crowd like really, really likes it. Like it, there was like an awkward silence when he was trying to get the crowd to sing along. And I was just like, just... Sometimes just leave well enough alone. So, um, towards the end of the match, 
Riddle, Accidentally, Spirit, Done, uh, O'Reilly and Fish, Double Team, Done, but he kicks out of a two count. Riddle tags him in. He hits the final flash to Bobby Fish. He hits Anita O'Reilly, and Dunn hits him with a kick. I do not know the name of their double team move, so that's why I said it like that. So don't kill me. But Riddle gets a three count, and Matt Riddle and Pete Dunn are your new NXT Tag Team Championships. Um, this was a really good tag match. I did not expect to get into it the way that I did. And to say that I'm legit, legit surprised that Dunn and Riddle won the titles is an understatement. I mean, I've made it clear that I am not a fan of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic because these tag teams, half of them are just thrown together with two singles competitors that have absolutely nothing in common and are forced to get along when they most likely were beefing like a month ago. And these, and these, these tag teams, they win a trophy. Like what does the trophy do? It gets you an NXT championship match. But in this case, if you have two single competitors challenging for the titles against a legit tag team, why the hell am I going to root for the makeshift team over the legit team? So, you know, I, I do understand like Matt Riddle is insanely over and hopefully this title win really puts to rest those rumors that he has backstage heat because I feel like if he did, he would not be getting, you know, punished, quote unquote, in terms of a tag team championship. So hopefully no more rumors of that. But um, I do like seeing Pete Dunne kind of come out of his shell. I feel like that's probably the only good thing that comes out of this. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I mean, Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle are probably the most awkward tag team pairing ever. So, you know, it, this is fun, but I don't know where this puts the Undisputed undisputed Era. But I'll get to that when we get to the main event, which is Tommaso Ciampa versus Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. Um, there was, a, this again was a long match. So... There was a lot of, you know, I'm just going to skim forward. A lot of back and forth wrestling in the beginning. Adam Cole avoids a Willow's Bell from the apron. Ciampa avoids a shot to the ring post. Cole hits a big boot, but Ciampa sends him into the steel ropes. Ciampa puts Cole in a one of the um, announced table chairs and delivers a running knee. Fast forward, Cole hits an Alabama slam to Ciampa. And again, this is when I... Remember what I said in the Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox match? I fucking cringed. Like, that man's neck is fucking... Is still together with, what, duct tape and glue and hopes and prayers? Like, we should not be taking moves like this. Like, these guys are constantly trying to kill themselves. Like, you do not need to kill yourself every takeover. We know that you are miles ahead of Raw and SmackDown. Talent-wise, production-wise, story-wise, everything. So do not go out there and kill yourself, especially Ciampa. Because, I mean, if you were not a fan of him before, that uh, these videos that uh, on the YouTube channel where you just fall in love with Willow and you get to see his struggle to come back, like, th- the story writes itself. So... Cole gets a two count after that just brutal, nasty Alabama slam to Ciampa. He hits a backstabber for another two count. He misses a Panama sunrise and Ciampa hits him with a German suplex. Then a torture rack bomb for a two count. Cole hits a Yushi Garoshi for a really, really close two count. I thought he was going to win. Um, Ciampa turns another Panama sunrise into an air raid crash for a two count. He power bombs Cole twice into the announce table. And that second one looked really stiff as hell. And I feel like Adam Cole, like, bounced his head, bounced off one of the monitors. Again, guys, you do not kill, have to kill yourself. Like, we get it. You guys are fucking awesome. Um, Ciampa hits a project Ciampa, but gets another two count. Cole misses a suicide dive, but later he gets the last shot to the back of Ciampa's head. Again, I cringe. But Ciampa, you know, the smart little... The smart little uh, psycho killer he is. He rolls under the bottom rope to avoid the pin. He misses the fairy tale ending. 
Cole back body drops him on the floor. Cole finally hits the Panama Sunrise from the announce tables of the floor. Ciampa drops him with a draping DDT and finally hits the fairy tale ending for a two count. Ciampa puts Cole in a cross face submission, but Cole reaches the bottom rope and then out of nowhere just you know the personality of dry paint. Roderick Strong appears on the apron. He distracts the ref as O'Reilly and Fish double team Ciampa on the other side. Um Cole tries to go for the last shot, but Ciampa gets out the way and then he throws Cole over the top rope and Cole lands on O'Reilly, Fish, and Roderick Strong. The ref takes a just unnecessary bump and Ciampa low blows Cole before he hits a fairy tale ending, but obviously there's no rep there's no referee there to count. Johnny Gargano appears wearing a DIY shirt and he seems like he's there to support um, Tommaso Ciampa, but he ends up hitting Ciampa in the face with the title. Cole covers Ciampa for the three count and Adam Cole retains his NXT championship. Um, This was a great match. I mean, what can you say about these two? Adam Cole and every main event and title defense, like, the match is long. Yeah, there's a lot of false finishes. I know I'm not a fan of it, but, I mean, these are matches that you can go back and always watch. So, you know, Ciampa looks like a million bucks. Adam Cole just, what is there not to say about him? He's a fucking star. Um, And, yeah, I just... I just felt like because the rest of the Undisputed Era lost their titles, it was a given that Adam Cole was going to retain his title tonight, but I just wasn't sure if it was going to be like a clean pin or not. Like, obviously, he does have the tendency to have the rest of the Undisputed Era interfere, but, you know, um, as far as the rest of the group goes, like I said, uh... I'm not a fan of Roderick Strong. I could definitely see O'Reilly as, like, a fun face for NXT. And as much as I love Bobby Fish, he's just, he's injury prone. And I just pray that he stays healthy enough. But um, it's looking like those coach rumors, you know, him being a coach in NXT or in WWE, however, they may actually be true. And... If it is, I mean, that's good. He can still be a part of wrestling, but it just sucks that he can't stay healthy enough. I mean, his knees or his legs or whatever, they're just, I guess they're shit at this point. So, or concussions or whatever his history is with injuries, you know, I just wish he could stay healthy enough. But with that being said, um, overall, I give the show an A+. Plus. NXT TakeOver is always deliver. So, again... This is nothing that you guys haven't heard before. I think my favorite match was Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair. Only because, like, I literally did not look away from my tablet from this match. And to me, if you can keep me interested enough to where I'm not scrolling or going back and forth on Twitter or just playing with my nine-month-old trying to get her to sleep or just not in the room at all, like, that says a lot. So, um, and quite frankly, NXT has the best women's division in all of wrestling. So, you know, I'm happy to see that the champ, the NXT Women's Championship is going to get a lot of shine at WrestleMania and de- deservedly so. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in to my review. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And... I will see you guys on Monday. And I do want to put like a little disclaimer. I am very sorry I have been MIA. Um, Last week was rough. So um, I'm going to, again, no promises, but I am going to make sure that I upload on Raw. So I will see you guys on Monday. Love you. Bye.